Today on the breakfast with over 100 election petitions being filed by grief candidates and their parties across the country. INEC has budgeted over 3 billion naira to defend the results of the general election. We will discuss uh, the import of this development. Now also on the breakfast as the federal government prepares to completely deregulate the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry, stakeholders are saying that petrol would sell for 750 naira per litre, asking Nigerians to brace up. All right, and uh, don't forget, we'll also look at some of the big headlines on the front pages of today's National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. These and more ahead on The Breakfast. And we're back uh, with uh, your morning tonic. We call it The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen this morning. Now, we don't have a plate. We don't have a kitchen here to serve you <laughs> breakfast. But of course, we will serve it to you, you know, uh, the information, the analysis, the discussions that you like to hear uh, right here on this program. Uh, Messi, a lot has happened between the last time we're here and now. A um, lot of things trending. We'll start off with um, uh, this first trending story. Uh, for me, the interesting thing about this story is that it's not just something that's carried in Nigerian media, Nigerian press, you know. It's it's um, uh, it's carried by foreign press, but in particular, there's a uh, the Seychelles news agency. I've been hearing of Seychelles for a long time, and it's one of those places you want to go you to. Want to go to yeah, right, for holiday. holidays and just have a good time and all that. Um, so the Seychelles news agency put out a, a, a report, a statement, a report rather, a news report, saying that the Seychelles Supreme Court are remanded a Nigerian female national. Uh, arrested on conspiracy to import and traffic a uh, controlled drug. This is what they said the Seychelles police uh, released as information uh, on Monday. Now, the, uh, the police said in a press release that the 52-year-old woman is being detained after she was arrested at the Seychelles International Airport Thursday after her arrival on an Ethiopian airline uh, flight. Uh, the arrested Nigerian followed a search, discovery, and seizure, uh, or the arrest of the Nigerian followed a search, re recovery, uh, discovery, and, and seizure of 250 grams of what is suspected uh, to be cocaine. Um, and this is coming not less than a month, or a year, sorry, after another female national of the country, Elsie Esther Vambe, uh, who is 45 years old, was was sentenced, sentenced rather to five years in prison in Seychelles uh, for the importation of a drug, a controlled drug, and another five years for trafficking a, a, a controlled drug, making a total of 10 years. Um, so that is what they're saying right there in Seychelles. Um, also, the Seychelles News Agency is telling us that uh, the Zimbabwean national, Vami, was arrested, uh, was sentenced to five years in prison on, in April 2022. Uh, for the importation and trafficking of a controlled drug after she pleaded guilty. guilty. So it seems that uh, this is a trend in Seychelles. Last Friday, <clears throat> the Seychelles police, according to the Seychelles News Agency, they say that uh, two foreign male nationals were given prison sentences for the import importation of cocaine. Uh, the male nationals, are, uh, foreign male nationals, are a uh, 58-year-old businessman, uh, Patrick Ike Chiku Uwama from Nigeria, Uwama rather, uh, who was sentenced to 30 years after he was found guilty of the importation of cocaine. And uh, uh, 42 year old Nicaraguan, uh, German Augusto Brook Dixon, who was uh, sentenced to five years in prison. So um, the Seychelles, uh, Seychelles and Archipelago is in the Western Indian Ocean. And what the Seychelles News Agency is saying is that. The country has a zero tolerance policy towards drug trafficking and importation uh, of illegal or controlled drugs and substances. And there's a maximum sentence of life in prison if you're found uh, guilty. So, um, Amigo Pierre, you, you have said some of the uh, thoughts right there. And when yeah. you talk about it, now don't forget the natural law of demand and supply. So, whatever you have. Uh, 
you know, which man, if you look at it, now this is not a whole brief for bad behavior or for Nigerians who are behaving differently, but if you look at the report of a time, see sure, there's uh, a destination market for heroin, cannabis, and some of this had substance. And I'm not surprised that, you know, Nigerian is involved in all of this. However, that's because of, you know, the demand that you have. And so drugs are smuggled into that country. Now, if you also look at reports and statistics, it's the fact that, you know, it's a country where you have uh, a lot of persons. Uh, if you talk about heroin, it's one drug that is mostly used in Seychelles, right? So uh, widely used, and the country have been estimated to be the highest in terms of consumption of heroin. And uh, the rate in the country, it's per capita. So yes, like I would say, I'm not holding brief for bad behavior. I'm not holding brief for Nigerians who are involved in all of this, but we also need to understand that uh, it's the natural law of demand and supply. Uh, so you have the fact that there's a market there. There would always be a boom. Unfortunately, a Nigerian is involved. And uh, for every other time, you know, crime is committed. I understand how a lot of people perceive Nigerians, like I said earlier, or I'm not trying to hold brief. I would not hold brief for bad behavior, but I'm just saying that you also need to understand that there are several factors. So yes, Seychelles alone as an island, as a country, uh, is known for a lot, drug and what have you. And so the markets would always tilt to them. We don't expect that we live in a society where there's going to be extreme, I mean, you're going to just have it, uh, you know, 100 perfect system. Uh, but that's what it is. But to Nigerians who are acting, you know, in this light, we, we, we constantly would say, it's not good. Uh, it's not good of us, you know, to engage in all of this behavior. Yes, there's need for survival. There's need to, you know, survive and do all this stuff. But when you get into these countries, there are too many things that you can do that uh, within, you know, the sphere of humanity that are legal, that I think that you can engage in. And so uh, it probably might just be, you know, the mentality of having it very quick and fast and having the quick money and what have you. But we're saying that's not the way to go because it leaves a dent on those who are still here in Nigeria, on those who intend, you know, to be in other parts of, uh, you know, the world. I mean, different countries in the world and people will get to talk about it. So uh, I, 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 like I would say, just still trying to say this and not making it look like I'm holding brief for, you know, this particular incident is unfortunate. But you also need to understand what's happening. It feels like the market in seashells seem to be on the high for drug uh, use and what have you. So I'm, I'm hoping that the government would be on top of the situation. It would be a different story. And that's why you have a lot of people tilting to that direction, mm. uh, according to reports. You know, Mercy, um, the last time I, I report, I went through uh, one of these. The <coughs> reports put up by the BBC says that um, at least 10% of the population of uh, Seychelles is hooked uh, on heroin, which is their drug of choice. Um, Seychelles is a small island. You have about uh, 99,999 you know, uh, people in that place. You can display maybe over about 100,000 persons in, on the island. Um, it's not a rich country. And you know that uh, uh, these drugs go to where the money is. So I wonder what the the cash is. I know that Seychelles is, uh, is on a major smuggling route. And I, I do not know if the, uh, um, the, the drug can find its way to another part of the world, if the United States of America easily through the Seychelles, I don't know. You know, but that's the place a lot of people get to for holiday and things can easily be exchanged there. Because I know that these drugs go to where, not just demand is, demand is okay, but can you pay? <laughs> the demand is there all over the world, the demand is there. No, but it feels like pay. that's the headquarters of... Yeah, so, so I, I mean, uh, I, I still will want to, to find out if there's something, uh, something fishy going on there. For instance, remember when, uh, of course, President Buhari banned importation of rice. And at some point, uh, we got to hear that uh, Benin Republic uh, is the largest importer of rice in Africa. And we look at the, the population of Benin Republic which is neighboring Nigeria, and we realized that people are smuggling it to, 
to Nigeria through Benin Republic, and that's why the importation there just shut up. So, so it, it's a, it's a big deal um, in Seychelles. The government is trying all manner of things to try and solve the problem, including in prison sentences. Um, but uh, it seems the president uh, Wavel Ram Kalawan is uh, saying that the prisons themselves are not even fit for the purpose. But for uh, Nigerians who are being caught, you know, with these things, I think. Um, uh, people have realized that he not everybody who has an issue abroad and people will rush to social media to defend in the name of uh, compatriots. Um, you know, people have to obey and respect the laws of countries to go to. Um, you can't say, oh, my, my country will come to social media and defend me and then call Abike Dabri and then uh, drag her on Twitter no, for, so that they'll come and do something for me. I think Nigerians are smarter than that. So if you are a Nigerian... Uh, Ghanaian, uh, Zimbabwean, like we saw that Zimbabwean lady, if you're traveling to a country, learn to abide by the rules of the country. Now, government should also uh, try their best. If you see there's nothing that the person just broke laws, let them do the time. That's as simple as that. However, I'm concerned as to the extent of uh, a prison sentence given to one Nigerian uh, uh, over, as compared to that Nicaraguan. You know, Nigerian got uh, 30 years while the Nicaraguan got five years. I'll be interested in knowing why. And this is where government can come in to look for the, uh, look at the application of the law. But we'll leave it at that. Well, um, let's just move away from that and, and look at you know, the next one at top trending. Very interesting. It's because you have uh, some quotas or, I mean, Nigerians have raised concern as to what will happen, uh, especially when the IGP did not talk about uh, police officers who were involved in various election malpractices. And the question is why? And so uh, senior personnel has answered to that. Now, I'll I just take you through it. Police officers who were involved in electoral offenses or malpractices have been identified and subjected to trials. That's what the IGP has said. He said that there's been a direction to commissioners of police to conclude their investigation and trials and times and forward their report or outcomes to the headquarters as soon as possible. And uh, Olumuiwa Adejobi, who is, uh, he's a prince apparently, and a very prominent one of that. He said uh, he, he, he is uh, a senior police officer. And he said that he won't, or uh, according to him, statement has been put out because this would be a statement on behalf of the police. We won't cover any policeman who um, was involved, I mean, uh, in dissuading the standard of election or security and its ethics, and even those who escorted their principles and election date are in hot soup for disobeying the law, uh, order and embarked on a, uh, you know, a conduct that's not acceptable to the police. I mean, that's what you have right there. Uh, but fingers are crossed, then I think that a lot of Nigerians have not also you know, taking that differently. You see different comments and stories, Kofi. Oh. Okay, interesting. That's, uh, 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 okay, that's, I think, the tweet that uh, the police um, uh, public relations officer, uh, Moyua Dejobi, uh, put out yesterday. Um, you can see it's in response to what someone said. And it's quite interesting seeing Nigerians engaging with uh, the police public relations officer on Twitter. And he's always, you know, uh, on, on hand to respond to handle issues, take on the, the people on that space and all that. He uses Twitter a lot. This is a man, uh, the police officer, who told Nigerians that MC Olomo was joking when he said that, uh, you know, he will should stay at home. <laughs> uh, so the police put out a, a press release talking about the, uh, the uh, review of the 2023 electoral process. And they said that the IGP commended uh, the officers, uh, commanders for peaceful polls, you know, are shows of effective collaboration with INEC for expeditious, transparent prosecution of electoral offenders. But someone now quoted that tweet and said, uh, the IGP did not talk about police officers who were involved in various election malpractices. Why? You know, and then mentioned the, the PRO of the police. And so it's interesting to see accurate mercy. He said police officers who were involved in electoral offenses or malpractices have been identified and subjected to trials. The IGP today directed commissioners of police to conduct their investigations and trials on time and forward their reports 
or outcomes to FHQ ASA. Okay, um, so some people still replied with him with uh, videos of people who, um, police officers who supported politicians to commit electoral crimes, including those who were even offering uh, police protection to politicians on um, election day, which is against the law. You know, some of them were fully kitted. There's a video someone shared of a police officer standing behind uh, a politician who was sharing new Naira notes, Messi. It's, it's funny. Standing behind a politician who was sharing new Naira notes. And they were there looking at him, fully kitted. <laughs> On election day, you know, someone shared that video. And that, that video of a gentleman in a red car who went to a, uh, some polling unit and then opened the ballot uh, box and was looking at ballot papers. And the ones that had um, votes against the party he supported, he told them. Uh -huh. And there's a police officer, there's a police officer in that, at that scene there to provide him protection to that politician. So these are things people were saying, asking, how about these guys? What's going on? Uh, I hope they've been identified or be tried soon. Uh, one of my letters should be in your office for next reaction. So we are written, actually written to the police public relations officer to deal with these guys, you know. And um, what Tomoe Iwa said that was that, that happened in Adamawa State, the IGP has ordered the arrest of the Honorable, uh, who is at large by all means while the police men have been detained and tried and tried. But the thing about this is I, I, I think people will keep asking these questions because we're not getting information. You know, the police, um, I mean, kudos if, if uh, 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 Muiwa, the JB, PP, Force P, P, R, O, says that they've arrested some of these guys and trying to, great. But how will people know if you don't tell them? All right, how will they know if it's like the gospel? You know, messy people can be safe you know, if someone knows what he preaches to them. You have to hear the word. You know, <laughs> faith cometh by what? By Hear hearing. <laughs> and hearing by the word of you God. You probably would have to. Fantastic. <laughs> you, you need Sunday school problem. It, it, it's know, like we need to put it off. <laughs> so people will understand and will, be, will calm down. When they hear, when the, if the police are taking it by the orderly rule trial, let them say, these are the officers we are trying. If found guilty, they'll face X, Y, Z. If they are not guilty, you say, well, we tried X, Y, Z officers. Out of them, these ones are found innocent. They've been returned to their bases. Then these ones are found guilty. Let people know. So, so, you so, know, so just to add a last one, they are the ones who will rush to the press and then parade people, mm. even before investigation starts. So, but, uh, I mean, just like you have re I mean, you have stated, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we have all of this happen. Uh, but over time, I, I think I remember just during the period of the elections, uh, Bauer, uh, Doroshid Bauer, uh, the EFCC boss, when he was asked, asked to how many persons we have in custody or how many arrests has been made as regards electoral malpractice and violence and those who are involved in vote buying. He, he couldn't really say that in public. And he said, oh, no, we don't have to say. So the issue of pe the people need to know. And I'm sure that this conversation, the fact that people need to know that something is done, that people are paying for this crime and offenses, because uh, we always want to say that if you can't do the time, uh, then don't do the crime. So yes, are there punishment? Uh, are people really paying, not in its real sense, it probably might not make any sense to you if you look at you know, the means of addressing all of this. But on the other hand, uh, it's expected that we have laws, are there, are there laws addressing these issues? What does this law you know, say about such behaviors? And then we want to see action. And when the people don't see action, then they begin to raise question. But that's it this morning on that one. Uh, Kofi, we need to move on to the next. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll play a video for you. And uh, when we put that out, please, um, uh, uh, we have to say that viewers' discretion is, is advised because uh, there, there will be some unsavory aspects of this, this video that you may not want to look at. So if you're not sure, you can, uh, you can take certain things. Uh, it's a good time to look away. So when you hear my <laughs> voice, you know, then you can, you can look back. Let's roll the tape. Okay, 
Let us go be one, my brother. Oh, Otila! Otila is far gone! Uh, those are, are very disturbing scenes, and that's why we had to uh, warn uh, those of you who were, um, who were watching, you know, to be careful in case you don't know. Look at that. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's quite worrying, really. So, uh, uh, really. Well, to, to to just give you a background, uh, five men were incinerated uh, for allegedly uh, attempting to snatch. Uh, a, a tricycle. This is a rickshaw taxi uh, tricycle, what we call keke in Nigeria, uh, from the, the rider in Onicha, the commercial uh, capital of Anambra State. Um, it's reported the incident took place around Oldham Paul Road, uh, close to the headquarters of what you call the People's Club. It's quite a popular place in Onicha. Um, this was on Sunday, March 25, 2023. Uh, according to eyewitnesses, the suspects allegedly tried to steal that uh, tricycle from the owner in broad daylight when they ran out of luck and were caught. And the mob, you know, who gathered after the men were rounded up, refused the advice of some people there to call in the police. They then proceeded to set the five men ablaze. And, um, of course, they didn't just set them ablaze. They, they smashed their heads, hit them with wooden planks with uh, stones with all sorts of things so they were not able to you know stand up and all that and then they put tires this is uh, car tires around them and of course probably poured some petrol and then set them uh, on on fire and if we hear one of the v people in the voices in the video that we played uh, screaming jesus 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 you know and a man burnt uh, to to death well, Kofi, I mean, that's a lot to grapple with this morning, uh, honestly. Uh, so w if we have to talk about this, we know that jungle justice has become a thing, you know, for us in our country. You remember the Alu 4? You remember yeah, the Alu 4 yeah, story? Was, uh, I'm sure you have seen Potako at that time, yeah. uh, you know, when all of that happened. Now, over time, we, we I mean, there are reports that <laughs> when this incident happened, these persons are, are not, you know, they are innocent. And uh, as, as much as we feel very grieved or we are displeased with how, you know, the police or uh, those who are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that people pay for their crimes, it also, uh, it's important that we pay attention to it. The issue of jungle justice is very barbaric. It's, uh, it's a cake. It's not a behavior that should be accepted in any century. Uh, whether it was in the wh whatever century you want to talk about, and not to even think about, you know, in the 20th century, 21st century, or in 2023, it's very barbaric. Now, if you look at, you know, the Constitution, you want to juxtapose what the Constitution talks about, the issue of jungle justice, it's uncivil, it's illegal, it's criminal, and because the Constitution is saying that who, I mean, even if you allege, you say, uh, whoever is alleged to have committed a crime and an offense, no matter the gravity of the offense, no matter how, how much you think that this person is guilty, they are still, they have the right to be presumed innocent until being proven by a court of competence jurisdiction. And so taking the laws into our hands, because I think that's what we're big at doing, uh, the excuse would be that the police has not lived up to the expectation the same persons, you know, would be, uh, you know, they would be let out of the hook and what have you. And so really justice would not be meted like we rightly stated. Everyone has the right to be presumed innocent, that, that right. So they are innocent until they've been proven by a court of competence. Yes, they, you, you probably would say, oh, we don't believe that justice would be served. But you know, taking the laws into your hand is also not uh, is also not good. So you can't have two wrongs trying to right, uh, two wrongs at the same point trying to make a right, you know. So two wrongs can never make a right at the end of the day. So if someone committed the crime, you think that he committed the crime, you caught him. What does the law say? This is what we're grappling with as a nation, uh, obeying the law, uh, you know, respecting what the law says. 
uh, it's okay to hand them over to the you know, police and relevant authorities. And whether or not we believe that justice will be meted, but it's not in our place you know, to take the laws into our hands and not to even think about taking another man's life. A life that you never gave. You can never give a life. It's, it's entirely, um, you know, condemnable. I would look for the words and adjective to describe that. But it's barbaric. It's, 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 it's on head of. It's inhuman. And I don't think that those who are involved in this, there's no justification for taking the laws into your hands, really. Everyone has an opportunity to be heard. So uh, just like I had mentioned, you know, to Kofi, the issue of the alu, uh, you know, th those who were killed, the Alu for. And up until now, I wonder how those who, who did this are sleeping. Because it's easy for someone to say, ole, ole, and in the space of it, you know, you lynch someone. And then does this solve the problem? And also, let's even look at it logically. So if you say that for every other person's, I mean, for the persons that you take laws into your hand, for everyone that you mother, that you, you know, you kill, and the, uh, you think that they're, they have committed a crime, even if you caught them red-handed, has that stopped the issue of theft and all of the criminality? No, it hasn't solved that. It hasn't solved the problem. And so we can't continue to behave in a certain way and expect a different result. I mean, I'm just taking aback how people would, you know, a group of persons, individual, would take the law so much into their hands in the guise of the fact that uh, the relevant agencies are not, living into the, uh, are not living up to expectation. And so we here, we condemn it. We say it's not acceptable. And uh, those who are responsible for this, it can't just fly because you have committed murder. You will be arrested, and I'm hoping that justice will take its course. Uh, it, it, it's quite unfortunate. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how how uh, you know human beings can can look another human being in the eye at, at this time and age. You know, we're not living in the days of uh, the Vikings to eat human flesh. You know, but you can see you can see some guy with a rock. Well, whilst the whilst the guy, the guy who was, I think, was bleeding from his head was just crawling. You know, you know, like a dying chicken. How it's his final moments. I'm strong. Someone still went with a plank and was hitting, 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 hacking. You know, and then one who was on fire or something. You know, somebody was using a rock and hitting him. Hitting, Messi. There's so much anger. On, on the streets of this country, you know, around the country, that, um, you know, you sense, and I've sensed it for years, you know, people are angry at, at, at sometimes you don't even know what they're angry at. But it's a, it's a type of anger on the street that, that even if you just happen to be working on your own, people can just be angry at you for just being, in there existing. So i give you an example. I was in a, and I think we're almost out of time. I'll make it snappy. I was in a vehicle. I think I accidentally, you know, he used my car to hit someone's car. And we had a little accident. And so I was trying to negotiate with the guy, you know, was not trying to run away or anything. And so I was trying to tell him, see, calm down, you don't need to shout. Um, let's sort it out. Trying to find out how we can pay or take it to panel beta. Ended up taking the car to panel beta, paid for it, okay. And then also had to go and look out and fix my own car. But the thing about it is this. Some persons were passing by. And I heard somebody in one taxi. It looked like a cramped up taxi. You know, taxis where two people sit in front. One of those in front was a, a lady who was shouting, no Graham, no Graham, hold on, hold on, hold on, no Graham. You know, so I looked far. I'm like, what is your business with what, what we are discussing here? Why? Do you know me? You don't know. So, you know. Um, it, it happens. It happens. You know, one other day I was in traffic, and uh, while the traffic light was on, I just looked down at my phone. You know, so the traffic started moving, I wasn't aware. And then I had to shout and raining insults on me. Guys were trekking on the road, raining insults on me. What happened? They said it was because I had not seen the thing was moving. And the names, of, just for that split second, I'm like, my God, there's so much anger, you know, um, uh, in the land. And I do not know how we're going to solve this problem. I mean, we have political issues and all that, security issues, but the anger on the streets that will make, of course, it's not, it's not palatable, it's not a nice thing to have criminals amongst us. Those guys want to steal uh, from a tricycle operator, you know, taxi, a uh, rickshaw taxi. Probably that's his, that's his livelihood, of course, and he could have lost his life in the process. They came to his rescue, but, but 
to now just not just arrest them and take them to police station, to actually smash their heads with rocks and wooden planks, and then pu put a, a, a car tire around them and watch them burn alive. And as they're burning, go back and hit them some more. What 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 level of of I don't know anger, you know? Do you need to? I mean, insan insanity. You need to get to to do that. I've never understood it, Mercy. Because if you're against crime, you don't commit uh, solve crime by committing crime, you know. And um, they'll tell you that oh, they don't believe the police will do anything about it. But you cannot just take a life, except of course you have very, very, very plausible reasons to do that. Maybe self-defense. You're under threat in the corner at that moment. Person is trying to kill you. Self-defense. You can plead that, you know. But I think the the police should go ahead and try to track down. Not just uh, public enlightenment now. Younger justice is wrong. Try to track down the people who are doing these things. Their faces are on the, they can be traced. They can be traced. And, and trace them. And then probably use them as an example to say this is not how things are done. People have gone to jail for crimes. They've gone inside, they've become changed people. They've come out and they've contributed to society. You can't take anyone's life. We tell the criminals they can't do what they're doing. We now should not go and do what we're telling them not to do. So we want to have a society where we behave like human beings, not like barbarians. So it's over to the police. Will they do something about this? I don't think so. But that's the only way that this will stop, if they start arresting the uh, perpetrators of jungle justice. Because tomorrow, we don't know. While we're saying the, the criminals, we don't want them to be released by the police and then they come and terrorize us again. We don't know who is an innocent person tomorrow who will be killed by jungle justice. Because like you said, Mercy, someone shouted, Ole. Anyway, we, we have to go. Um, before we go, Messi, you want to say something about no, this? No, All right, all right. It, it's worrying. I can see that you are disturbed, you know, by the images. Yes, uh, I am. You know, we have to go. We'll take a break when we come back with Delve straight into what the papers are saying.